All right, this is going to be a little further look into the BTC Core claim filed by Dr. Craig Wright for passing off and, you know, some unanswered questions here that we could uh, discuss for 901 billion pounds. All right, big blockbuster case coming at you. Uh, filed on the 10th. I did a full analysis on, pretty thorough analysis on it now, and it looks to me like, uh, you know, one of the unanswered questions I had from the last video was about the copyright claim and whether or not that violated the court's order. So he's uh, the prior court's order where the COPA, found, COPA court found that he was not Satoshi Nakamoto. So we, we know it's clear now after reading the pleadings that he's definitely made a clear distinction that he's separate from Satoshi Nakamoto and he's giving all the credit to Satoshi as a completely separate legal entity from himself. So the identity issue is not is completely irrelevant to this case. Uh, that is also one of the facts alleged in the pleadings. So, but what is... Uh, was a little bit confusing was the copyright element of it because yeah so what dr wright is claiming is that satoshi nakamoto had a right to the copyright of the white paper and bitcoin system and it was under the mit copyright uh it was it was copyrighted under mit now what he's claiming is is that the the system it's really a fascinating so the the complaint itself is a fascinating read like i said like the first 20 pages you really get into the nice thick background facts about Bitcoin. And I really like that part of it. He's, he's laid out, I like how he's laid out the facts in the, you know, the opening statement of facts area because it's, it's just background facts, dates, times, and events. And it gives a good thorough understanding of, of all this stuff. I really, really appreciated that. So but the MIT license is one of the things that he's alleged in the statement of facts and how when the system came out, it was allowed that anybody could actually take the system and copy it. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's apparently what he's alleging. So that anybody could take the system and copy it and make a different blockchain. And like Ethereum, for example, uh, he uses that as, that as an example inside the complaint. He says that, well, Ethereum was one where it's not uh, uh, alleging to be Bitcoin. It's different. It's taken its own approach and made its own new blockchain. And so it's giving that example in it now. But what it's mainly complaining, he's mainly complaining about is he's saying, well, there's this protocol called BTC, which has completely taken the name of Bitcoin, the original Bitcoin design, and now it has changed the Bitcoin protocol and it's doing something completely different. He's, he's alleging Taproot, Segwit, the, the, the smaller transactions, the seven transactions a second, higher fees. And so he's basically alleging that now that system is completely different and then it's using the name Bitcoin. So that is against the original copyright, against the original MIT, MIT licensing software by Satoshi Nakamoto. And now the standing question gets complicated because, well, then how does he, Dr. Wright, have standing if that was by Satoshi Nakamoto? So that is a uh, rather tricky legal question to be answered. And his point is that, well, he... He's a beneficiary. Well, not a beneficiary. He's saying he's an investor and he developed on the protocol and that he counted, he depended on the protocol to stay the way it was, to stay the way it started in 2009 with the way it was designed, the white paper. So he invested in that, he developed on that, and he built businesses on top of that. And by BTC Core changing that protocol, he was harmed because his initial capital investment is now... Uh, smaller, and it's ultimately he's he's alleging BSV, which is BSV is a what a fifty dollar price versus the sixty thousand dollar BTC. So he's alleging this this giant uh, you know giant difference in the market cap has resulted in the passing off of the name Bitcoin. So dude, it's really uh, I'm you know my question really is is going to be about how it how it relates to the first case because remember we had the the case uh, the identity case against. Uh, Dr. Wright by COPA uh, for uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, which he lost. Now, after that, there would have been another case about the database rights and the passing off. So I, I'm not, uh, I don't know how different this, obviously this is different because it's, he's saying that he's not Satoshi in this case. So it's definitely different, but I'm not sure if it's uh, how close it is in the statement of facts. I haven't really done an analysis on it. Not really necessary, but I'm just more curious to see if it's actually a lot different or not. So Maybe something interesting for somebody to check into. You know, a couple of other uh, a couple of other things. Yeah, uh, 
I did hear back, big news on this, I did hear back from SG Anon. He's, a, uh, he's an influencer on, on X and on Rumble, pretty much. I don't think he's on YouTube. But uh, he did an amazing show with Satoshi about, about the uh, Bitcoin protocol. Really fascinating show. Absolutely amazing. One of, one of my favorite. I think it was, it was 94. So anyways, I reached out to him with a simple little, like barely one, one line message. And he, and he got back to me today and he said he wants to connect. So I thought that was pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to connecting with him, doing a show. I have another guy who more on, uh, I don't know if I can mention his name, private meeting that I'm going to have this week. He's another guy that uh, I won't mention him publicly right now until I talk to him first. That's pretty, should be pretty interesting. Uh, some of the, just some other things happening behind the scenes. One thing I am considering, it's kind of been public, is uh, doing a show with, G, uh, well, he go, let's say he goes by Dr. James on X. And so, because there was a, I'm getting videos sent to me from, other people that he, where he, he said in the video that he was, uh, paid by Blockstream to, uh, you know, basically paid by Blockstream to infl infiltrate BSV. Okay. It's kind of the claim. So I'm considering doing a show on that. Maybe on X we could do it or, uh, you know, just kind of throwing the idea out there might be entertaining, uh, to hear his perspective on, on that. I just don't know if it's just a, just a joke or not, but I'm hearing from other people that it's not a joke, that there is actual links to it, so that it's actually not a joke. So I, I, I guess I'm just trying to find out whether, whether it's true or not. It'd be kind of cool to find out if actually a guy was hired, comes out, and he was saying, I was hired, I was paid to do these things and attack Craig Wright, BSV. That'd be cool to find out. So that being said, a little recap on the case. We got, uh, we got this new case filed. It doesn't look like the copyright uh, part of the case. It doesn't look to me like uh, he's not claiming. So Craig's not claiming the copyright, so it's definitely arguable that it's not in violation of the court order. Uh, I would say that that whoever comes forward to, to defend this case, and there's a lot of defendants he's, he's naming, it's going to be tough to serve the summons. In this case, is going to be a, you know just the jurisdictional issues is going to be tricky in nature. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. But we got to, I would say when they come forward, they're going to probably file a motion to dismiss of some kind, dismiss the action for standing for, uh, you know, for, then they're definitely going to try to argue that other court order and violation. But again, be mindful uh, that is a separate action. So. No matter what happens in that other case, if COPA in that other case wants to try to motion the court and say, hey, look, Craig Wright's in violation of the court order, issued contempt, that would be in that case. It wouldn't be this case. This case would still is completely independent and separate. It's its own action separate from that completely. So this case still goes forward to, you know, these parties got to respond. And once the court gets jurisdiction, they're going to have to respond and we'll go to bat, play ball. So, all right, that's going to do it. Be sure to hit the ones, subscribe, leave a comment, welcome everybody new, and we, I will see you at the top. This is Gavin Gregory.